Hello, my name is Christy Cosina, and for this lesson, I will talk about how you can develop your collaboration skills on group projects. These skills are important because you most likely will work on teams and projects in future classes and during your employment. Plus, it is helpful to periodically brush up on team work skills even if you are already on teams. The objectives for this lesson are discussing how teams communicate, defining team phases, explaining how to improve team meetings, and identifying effective team strategies. The first objective is discussing how teams communicate. First, we must know what purpose of a team is in order to figure out how one might communicate. Teams are formed to solve problems. For this particular project, your problems are researching themes of a chosen decade in the 1900s and presenting your findings in a group with classmates. Second, it is important to work with your group mates in order to solve your project's problems. In order to do that, your team needs to communicate. Without regular effective communication that is clear, team roles and responsibilities may blur in conflict that prevents team goals from being achieved. So, how would you communicate to achieve your project goals? There are several methods. According to your reading on communication methods by Paige Turner, there are two categories of effective communication that exist in group work situations, written communication and verbal communication. If you need more information on the differences of written and verbal communication, please listen to the associated podcast after this multimedia presentation. The second objective of this lesson is defining team phases. Knowing how to communicate in teams is important, but just as importantly as knowing what to do during each phase that a team passes through. Being informed during each phase will help your team achieve project goals. According to your reading, Forming, Storming, Norming, and Performing, a psychologist named Bruce Tuckman first created the article title's phrase. There are now five stages in team formation, with the fifth being the adjoining phase. Storming is the first stage when you and your groupmates come together and begin working on a project. Storming is the next stage where conflicts and power struggles occur the most as group members compete for certain roles and assert ideas. Norming occurs when members begin to listen to each other and resolve conflicts. Performing is the phase when groups work together and achieve project goals. Adjourning is the final stage of team formation when members prepare to leave the group and break up relationship bonds that were nurtured during the project. For more information on team phases, please read the associated article in your readings for this lesson.